When I made my last video on TNO, I figured it'd be a niche one-off that wouldn't get many views at all. <laughs> yeah, it didn't work out like that. I also figured that I'd laid out everything that one would need to render a verdict on the mod, and there'd be no need to return to it. But since I like getting more subscribers, here we are again. I planned to do a video surrounding the German economic collapse from what I remembered about it, but after looking for lore on it on the subreddit and in the mod, I found that there basically wasn't any lore on the matter. So instead we'll do a video on how the various individuals in the game are completely unlike their historical counterparts. We'll start with Hermann Goering, continue on with Reinhard Heydrich, talk about some consistent trends across these characters and others, and then finish by talking about why all this matters. If this sounds interesting to you, please remember to like, comment, subscribe, and hit the bell button for notifications. All of this really helps the channel and my plans for more Hoi Foreign History content. One caveat before we begin. Just like the last video, we don't want the algorithm to tell that we're talking about these things, so we'll call the ideology of the Germans in this time, Nonoism, and we'll call this guy, the Funny Mustache Man. Hermann Goering, also known as the Funny Mustache Man Zeppelin, is a major figure in TNO, just like he was in our actual history. He was one of the early adopters of Nonoism, and he was a high-up figure throughout its rule. He was in charge of a wide variety of industrial efforts, he was the field marshal in charge of the German Air Force, and he was, by law, the successor of the Funny Mustache Man. He didn't get to this position by being incompetent. When having his IQ tested at the Nuremberg Trials, he got a score of 138, meaning that if it weren't for how dense his skull was, he would have had a head just as big as his belly. All told, a competent, powerful, extremely intelligent individual. How is he depicted in TNO? Well, he's still an important figure. He can take power through the German Civil War, and if he wins the Burger War, he's notable for being a puppet of the militarists who want to invade everywhere. Okay, we'll begin by ignoring the fact that he was a notable anti-war voice in the lead-up to the real World War II, and talk about how unbelievable him being a puppet in this way is. Even in this timeline, he's still an incredibly important economic figure, the head of the Air Force which proved itself as one of the most important branches of the modern military, and one of the earliest and most influential adopters of Nonoism. Although from his behavior in this mod it might be canonical that his IQ gets lowered somehow, but for some reason he's reliant on the support of the Invade Everywhere militarists who are led by Field Marshal Ferdinand Schoener. Now, even in the mod, Schoener is described as a proponent of the Mass Infantry Charges Doctrine, which is outdated by any metric, and he's also described as something of a joke who failed to win renown for himself in World War II or the subsequent rematch. This would seem to be an imbalanced relationship, especially for someone who has a large amount of power in his own right. But the devs needed someone to go on a wild conquest ride, and who better to pick than the funny fat man? Goering's depiction is pretty bad, but it's relatively tame compared to how they treated Reinhard Heydrich. Let's talk about how he was in real life. He was also a relatively early adopter of Nonoism and joined the SS. From there, he got a record for being extremely competent and efficient. He helped organize the secret police and helped it become extremely effective at suppressing dissidents. He helped organize the annexation of Austria, the Night of the Long Knives. Basically, every action meant to suppress enemies of the Nono regime was organized by him in some way. And what was his wartime reward for this? His second favorite thing, more work. They sent him to govern the Czech territories. He did the usual stuff of rooting out spy networks and resistance cells in an incredibly effective manner to the point where they were nearly paralyzed, but he also gave out increased food rations and pensions, free shoes, organized events for workers, gave them Saturdays off, and introduced unemployment benefits for the first time in Czech history. The result? The Czechs became extremely peaceful and had higher industrial output than some German provinces. All told, he was an incredibly effective organizer and politician who knew that you can't be too harsh on the people you're trying to govern. Kind of like a German Gull Dukat, except Gull Dukat actually did nothing wrong. This made the leader of the SS, Himmler, rather fearful of him, to the point where some believe that he arranged for Heydrich to receive inadequate medical care after his assassination attempt leading to his death. 
So how was he treated in TNO? Well, to answer that, first we have to figure out how the SS was treated. After nonoism fails in a few things, Himmler decides the solution is ultra nonoism, which basically means that everyone lives in a concentration camp and happiness is banned because we've decided to be a Sunday morning cartoon. He attempts a coup, and the funny mustache man gives him Belgium and a part of France, so he goes away, but within this place he manages the SS in Germany and elsewhere to further his dastardly plans to cause a global nuclear war so the whole world falls to ultra nonoism and there is no happiness ever, mwa ha 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 ha. Now, if I had a week, I couldn't list everything wrong with this, so we'll just accept it and move on. Now, how does Heidelich? The independent, very competent person who Himmler fears react to all this. The person who thought you should make your subjects' lives better to get more out of them, which is pretty much the opposite of Super Himmler's ultra no -noism. Well, he's made into Super Himmler's puppet and abandons everything that led to the occupation of the Czechs being so successful, despite the fact that he was extremely independent and Himmler was afraid of him. Right. Or at least that's what I would have said if it weren't for the ever-thoughtful developers of TNO who released the big update with a new path for Heidelich. What was this new path? Did he become more of a moderate reformist no-no -no like TNO Speer or his actual real self? Well, no. Did he impose ultra no noism smiling his band like their own development diary suggested he would? Um, no. So what did he do? Well, he competes against Himmler, takes over the SS, then shoots Himmler in the face. Okay, promising start, promising start. What does he do next? Well, his kids don't like him, and ruling the country in its current position would be hard, so he shoots himself and Germany falls into chaos, game over. Really? That's the best you could do? Compared to the other three successors in the Burger War, each with unique mechanics and a decade of content, this just reeks of laziness. I mean, we're supposed to believe that a guy who really was a true believer in the no-no cause suddenly turns around and converts just because his kids don't like him? An extremely competent and iron-hearted killer suddenly gives up and abdicates via a bullet to the head because oh no being a dictator means you have to kill people as if he hasn't been doing for decades without a hint of remorse there isn't even a shred of the real Heidelich left here and we get the impression this is intentional because this isn't about realism or an engaging story this is about wish fulfillment just like Sablin in Russia, we have to have a path where all the evil people admit they were wrong and get what they deserve and all the evil ideologies lead to failure because, again, Sunday morning cartoon. Now, inevitably, someone, or more accurately, 50,000 someones, will attempt to drive me to suicide by commenting, but what about Speer's victory path? And I'm glad they brought it up because it allows me to talk about how the devs mischaracterized pretty much all of their characters. Speer is another contender for the Burger War who wants to moderately reform Nonoism. But if he lets it get too out of hand, then the epic wholesome 100 pro-democracy gang of four take over and make a democracy. If that happens, we get a raving cartoon villain out of him who goes, Ach, what a travesty, I was wrong to entertain any ideas of reform. Heidrich was right, and now I will shoot the gang of four myself. While the gang of four are all smug in their victory. If he wins, then he goes, all, Aha, now that I have won here, there will be no mercy for the traitors. A simple background check will reveal this one was you. While his enemies go to their death all stoic and dignified. This isn't limited to just Speer. Nearly every bad guy within the mod is characterized, albeit to varying extents, as a raving, vindictive, incompetent loon. But why does this matter? Did I just spend this whole video defending no-nos? Well, no, they were evil and there's no doubt about that. Every single one of them was involved in massive crimes against humanity. But evil doesn't mean incompetent. Evil can be charismatic, accommodating, intelligent, and very, very successful. 
When you forget these things, you end up engaging in poor storytelling with a reader who's constantly taken out of your work by the ravings of your villains and the inconsistency between their real life and in-game counterparts. But this also deals with a much more fundamental issue in our lives, how we treat our enemies. Most of the TNO devs would consider the no-nos to be their great enemy, even if the feeling isn't mutual. I'm not saying they should have been more generous with the no-nos, but I am saying that their casual disregard for the strength of no-noism was a mistake. After all, anyone who underestimates and disregards their enemy is setting themselves up for total defeat, and those are just the facts. If you like this video, please remember to like, comment, subscribe, and hit the bell button for notifications when future videos come out. Goodbye!